If you have completed the previous tutorials on SPM, FSL, or AFNI, you created general linear models for an fMRI task study. In this case, a single parameter estimate was calculated for each regressor in your model. The estimate was then calculated for each voxel for each subject, and then used for a group level analysis to determine where there were significant differences between parameter estimates. While many experiments use this approach, there are other scenarios in which we measure not just the bold response to the stimulus itself, but the bold response to different aspects of the stimulus. For example, let's say we have a condition in which a light is shown for a few seconds and then switched off. During certain trials, the light is relatively weak, while during other trials, the light is relatively strong. If we had a measurement of the light intensity, we could determine whether the bold response covaries with it. This covariation is called parametric modulation. In other words, does the bold signal seem to increase as the intensity of the stimulus increases and decrease as the intensity decreases? The same idea can be applied to other kinds of experiments. For example, social psychology researchers may require the participant to rate a particular image on how aversive it is, how attractive it is, or on some other scale. To illustrate how parametric modulation works, we will be using a dataset from Tom et al. 2007 that used a gambles task. In this task, each trial presented both a potential gain and a potential loss. The probability of getting either one was 50%. By presenting a range of potential gains and losses, the researchers were able to make the gains and losses orthogonal to each other. That is, they did not systematically go up or down together on each trial. In other words, the gambles were independent. In the general linear model, they included the response to the gamble itself and parametric modulators for potential gain and potential loss. For an explanation of what the model would look like with multiple modulators, see the ebook chapter in the more info box down below. Although it is important to create an experiment in which the modulators are orthogonal to each other, it is also necessary to make sure the parametric modulators are orthogonal to the regressors they are modulating. And for this, you should mean center them. This reduces the correlation with the main regressor, as illustrated in this figure from Bob Spunt's webpage. In the sample data set, the regressors have already been mean-centered, so there's no further editing we need to do for them. Before you start the tutorials for how to do parametric modulation in each software package, you will first need to download the data set. As with the tutorials for SPM, FSL, and AFNI, we will download our data from openneuro.org, which can be found here. The link can also be found in the more info box down below. If you already have the Amazon Web Services downloader installed from the FSL tutorial, then you can open a terminal, make sure you go to the desktop, and then type the following, AWS S3 sync no sign request, followed by this web address. It'll take a few moments to download, we're going to fade out and come back when it's finished. When it's finished downloading, move it to a different name called Gambles. You are now ready to run a parametric modulation analysis with any of the software packages in the playlist below.